Well, hi again. I wanted to show my new fiddle. Just finished, number 236. And her name is uh, Lavinia, and she's named after uh, the mother of one of my all-time best friends. I've known him for about 30 years. His name's Charlie Ullian. And uh, it, this fiddle was is named after his mother, who passed away a couple years ago. And uh, according to Charlie, she was an amazing person. And uh, it, she had a, old, a cool old-timey name from, uh, she lived in South Florida. And uh, she was 101 years old when she passed away. And uh, she played music uh, with Charlie when he was growing up. And so um, she's very deserving of having a fiddle named after her. And it's an honor to actually be able to name a fiddle after her so uh, I did some uh, little extra um, antiquing on the top um, that I usually don't do in uh, I guess recognition of Lavinia who was 101 years old and um, and she was pretty much an antique in her advanced age so uh, it was appropriate to have an antique looking fiddle and uh, it's Engelman top and uh, the ribs are flamed western big leaf curly maple from um, off of uh, Orcas Island and uh, the back is western big leaf curly maple and uh, Got some old time leaf pattern carvings on the corners that I like to do. And the neck is matching, it's from the same stock of wood. And uh, I put uh, pegs that have a little Parisian eye with the pearl and brass inlay. I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of blurry in the camera. And uh, it just kind of dresses it up a little bit. And I uh, antique to the scroll too a little bit darken the curves and so the neck has the same kind of flame that the ribs in the back have and the ebony is Indian ebony from India and uh, ebony pegs, ebony fingerboard the ebony uh, ta um, chin rest the uh, tailpiece is composite it's a Whitner um, um, tailpiece with built in fine tuners which makes it really easy to tune and uh, you might notice those who know about violin setup I like to bring my sound posts a little south of typically where a lot of makers and luthiers put them uh, I do that to get a certain tone a certain voicing that I like in my fiddles and it seems to work really well uh, I've had cases where someone may have worked on one of my fiddles and um, adjusted the sound post so well sound post too far back and they adjusted back where the books call for it and it destroyed the tone and then it had to be brought back to to where it is so <laughs> I explain that to people who take my fiddles that people will tell you it's wrong but if you want the voice if that's why you you took the fiddle because of its voice well don't don't mess with it leave it the way it is I spent a lot of time doing a uh, voice and tonal adjustments till I get that sweet spot so the rib the lower rib is uh, one piece and the um, back is one piece eliminating two to the joints that sometimes split and come apart after 100 or 200 years and I have her strung up with uh, prim strings and so I happy with the color of this one it, it's got kind of a, a, a golden uh, base and with a uh, brown amber to a kind of a chestnut brown shading uh, over it in certain places so um, I kind of like that look I've, for this fiddle I've gotten away from using a lot of red which sometimes also looks nice but I, I kind of miss that old timey appearance of the brownish amber so it's just Every fiddle I make, I feel differently about what color to use and how I mix my varnish up and my oil pigments. 
So anyway, that's a little brief description of uh, Lavinia, uh, number 236. And I'll try to play her for you a little bit. I'm <clears throat> very happy with how she sounds. She has a good, strong voice, but not overpowering. Um, not strident, not metallic sounding in the... Uh, there aren't, uh, I, I have not found anyway any notes so far that um, stand out uh, above the other ones. It's pretty balanced all across the strings, which I'm th always thrilled when that happens because that's probably one of the hardest things to achieve in building a, a violin is getting a balanced sound all the way across with no wolf notes and no weak notes and no notes that are stronger than the other ones. <laughs> And when you get that, um, it's really a pleasure to play because you don't have to worry about certain notes that you just dread playing because they just pop out at you. And um, so it makes it more pleasant, to, pleasurable to play and easier actually to learn on for people still learning. Well, we're all learning. We're all still learning at every level. So let's see if I can play her a little bit. Excuse my playing. old waltz a sleeping beauty waltz I've kind of adapted a little bit from the original classical composition but it I think it's the Disney movie version but it's uh, it's a nice version so the strings are new and they're not broken in yet they're uh, they have a little bit of an edge to them that will start to kind of toned down as the fiddles played and the strings wear a little bit and stretch out and uh, kind of get a little more mellow maybe and um, but new strings always do that and uh, after a few hours of playing they um, they kind of mature so you might hear that edgy edginess to it <laughs> Josh for my shaky playing but um, hopefully it gives a little idea of um, the character of this uh, this Lavinia number 236 and um, thanks for watching see you next time <laughs>